Hey everyone, Marcus here from the Ashland Fly Shop and today we're going to be tying a really cool little winter steelhead fly. Um, now that we're starting to see the very first um, winter steelhead coming in at the coast, um, which will keep going for the next couple months. Um, and we're going to just tie um, some of the colors that I like to use um, in the winter. So we're going to start here on a 51 millimeter OPST steelhead shank. And I'm going to, today I'm going to wrap with a, a hot pink, um, a hot pink um, thread on top of here, just a 140 thread in hot pink. And start at the top and just slowly wrap our way back. Get to the very end clip off our thread and then I'm going to tie in my fire line for the hook and this one on the hook um, I'm actually going to keep the hook a little bit closer up than I normally do. So yeah we're just going to thread this 30 pound fire line that I'm using up through this size 2 um, owner hook off the back and I am just going to leave it a bit closer than normal just um, to keep the profile of the fly. Most of this fly that I'm about to do, um, the body's going to come off the front station, not the rear station. So I'm going to leave that hook um, pretty close in there um, and just start to wrap over that fire line. Bring it up all the way to the eye. And then I will clip these a little bit just so it makes it the best length to cover the body on the way back. And yeah, it's just worth, you got to bring um, any trailer wire, wire material. It's really good to bring it back the second time. And on the second time, really every three wraps, just, just cinch that thing down. Um, and just pull all that material tight. And it leaves you with a nice even body to start with, which is um, something that I really like to have. And then I'm gonna start with a new color of ice dub that we recently brought in, which is the fluorescent yellow um, on the back station of this fly. And I'm just gonna wrap it um, in a dubbing loop here. catch that loop with my spinner, let it dangle down, pull out a good sized chunk of um, dubbing there. And this is just going to be a little bright spot um, at the end of the fly to give the fish something to be attracted to. So just pull all that in. And it is worth um, talking about with dubbing. If it lays on like this, like you can, in certain flies, you might want that extra, um, that extra material to just kind of flow. But on this one, you can just pick and pull these fibers away um, to really just reduce it down to that, that dubbing ball that you want there. Bring everything back, make some nice clean wraps. And then I'm going to tie in, um, we got a new color of the MFC Bard Schloppen, which is chartreuse. And this is just going to add um, to that hot spot at the bottom of the fly. So I'm just going to pull uh, maybe two inches worth of that Schloppen, tie it in from the tip. Cut it off on the top there. And then begin to wrap. And yeah, with schlopping almost more than any other type of hackle, you just want to make sure um, that none of it's getting trapped in there. So each wrap, you want to pull these fibers out a little bit. And yeah, that barring um, 
just has a nice look off the back of the fly. Kind of seat the hook. And then tie off your stem. Just nice solid wraps. And then we're going to work on the body. And first of all, on the body, I have um, another new color of the MFC saddle, which is the yellow barred saddle, um, which is going to be working up the body on this fly. And I'm just going to pull all these feathers out, um, trying to get them to lay as straight as they can. Tie this feather in at the tip. Cut it off. And then I will tie the wire that will secure that in there, which is ultra wire in silver. And then working up through the body, we're going to have crinkle mirror flash in the pearlescent color. And like I often do, I'll just grab um, five to ten strands of that. Tie it in. I like to tie it in through the length of the body. Um, first of all, it just keeps, keeps your body really even, um, but it also gives some of that pearl um, underneath so that if you miss any wraps, you still have that pearl showing through. And then I'll just leave a, enough room to get a good front station on the fly. And then I'm going to grab my pearl crinkle mirror start wrapping here. And I will take extra time to cover up any any thread wraps that are visible underneath there. And just work your way up fairly slowly. You got and just, I actually like it when it when it lays really nice and flat like that because it allows you to cover the body a little bit quicker. That's about as much body as we need, and I'll just grab all that. Clip it off. And then we'll come back through with this barred saddle in yellow. So yeah, we'll just make these thread wraps nice and consistent up the body. Yellow, probably the <laughs> This yellow um, throughout the body seems to be one of the more um, overlooked colors in steelhead tying. Um, but it just looks so cool and it just lightens up that body a little bit. Um, Then I'm going to come through and secure those. And you can secure, um, you can counter wrap your securing wire, but I like to wrap it um, in the same direction. And you just kind of wiggle it up there. You're going to catch, catch some hairs, um, but you're just trying to catch as few as possible. Now we're ready to start um, the front station on the fly, which is going to start off um, just with some Arctic Fox in black. And I'm just going to 
make a prop here. But before I do that, I'm gonna tie in what will be the wing, um, which is bright blue um, craft fur. And I'm gonna tie it in before I do this station um, so that it lays, and you'll see later, so that it lays over the prop um, with a little bit, little bit more um, fluff in it. And we just got this craft fur um, in most of the steelhead colors um, that you're familiar with. Like bright blue and pink and purple. So I'm going to tie this in. Leaving very little extra. And then I'll start wrapping my Arctic Fox right at the back of that. And I'll just hold this loop in my dubbing spinner. Take the time to clip this extra craft fur here just to make the fly look a little neater. And then I've got a little patch of black Arctic Fox and I'm just gonna grab a little tuft um, just to give this fly a nice prop. Right like that, I'll trim the base there throw it in my dubbing spinner. And then I'll pick it out. Just need a nice big profile to work with here. Yeah, it just makes this nice big prop. And I'm going to tie that off in front or on the back side of this craft fur. And then the craft fur just lays back over the top. And you can make a few wraps. Um, back on top of it, but it just gives it that um, nice, kind of just props it right over um, the Arctic Fox, giving it a really um, kind of poofy look to it, which is really cool. And then on top of that, we just brought in this ice wing fiber um, in a couple different colors here. And I have all the pinks as well in the shop. Um, but today, this fly is going to have a little bit darker top. So I'm going to pull, pull this purple out. And you can see this ice wing fiber is just so such a long material. Um, and how I like to use it, I just like to drape it over the fly, um, on top of the fly. And then behind, on the, through the bottom of the fly, and what that's going to do is, you know, you can tie it in long like this and then as you clip it, or you can even just pull it to the length that you want um, in the fly. Just gives it um, a little shimmer and it's really long right now. I'm just going to pull some of that out. And as you, as you work with it, you have the opportunity to cut it at different lengths um, and really have it be whatever shape and length that you're looking for and it'll kind of splay out of the fly, wrap around a little bit. Just gives it a nice wispy look there. I'm going to trim this a little bit. And 
And as you can see throughout the fly, it kind of lays down in that classic um, umbrella shape that we, in spay flies or steelhead intruders, we all look for this, this big poof, and that's why we like this ice wing fiber so much. Um, and on top of the ice wing, I'm actually, I usually um, throw my ostrich in a dubbing spinner, but because of the length um, of these fibers up at the tip of this, I'm actually going to wrap the tip of, of this in here because it's kind of the, the perfect length that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to, and you can choose this wherever you want. You could wrap from the very tip, um, but for me, on this fly, that's about as much as I need is right there. Because it's wrapped, it'll take a little more room um, than spun because you want all these stem wraps um, to lay down without pinching each other down. Let's get that one yeah, right on top of it. thread a little further up there. Readjust on the stem and then we'll just grab that stem right there. I will make a couple wraps back on that ostrich um, just to get it to lay down. And then we're ready for our collar, which on this fly is going to be. Um, And then we're ready for our collar on this fly, which is going to be silver pheasant, um, which I often use in place of guinea. It's not as stiff as guinea is, but I really like um, that it has a different kind of color pattern to it. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't work as well as guinea in, in protecting. The reason why guinea is so popular is because it's stiff, so it pr protects the rest of the body of the fly. Um, so silver pheasant doesn't work as well as that, but it, it looks really nice, um, which is why I use it a lot. And it's worth saying, you can see in this fly that I don't have any weight, um, which a lot of people, once we get to winter steelhead season, um, they kind of just think that it's medium heavy extra heavy lead eyes, big sink tips. Um, and although you might find that situation more in the winter um, than in the summer or fall, you don't necessarily need to have that weight in the fly. Um, so having an unweighted fly, if you're fishing gravel bars, um, soft tail outs, um, shallow riffles, um, where winter fish will travel through, um, having an unweighted fly is going to allow you to fish that water as well as getting into, if you use this, you know, if you get, get it under 12 and a half feet of T14, it's going to, it's going to swing deep through those classic runs. Um, so I kind of like, I, ha I have a mixture of all different weights, but I like having, um, an unweighted fly, um, particularly for the coastal fishing, um, where you could be fishing some of that softer, softer water. Just gonna pretty this fly up a little bit. And then I'm gonna finish up the head 
And the head, um, like the rear of the fly, I just, it's why I choose um, bright pink um, and same as why I choose um, chartreuse in the back. I like to have multiple hot spots in the fly. Um, I think that it just gives, especially if the water's dirty, if they see that really bright butt or if the fly is coming broadside and they can see that head. Um, just for me, it just adds um, an extra level of confidence um, when I'm using, when I'm swinging water. So there it is. That is our winter steelhead fly using some of these new materials. We've got the, this longer ice wing fiber that you can see this kind of light wispy flash and then um, obviously the craft fur that kind of brings that blue through the body. Um, purple and blue um, is a really cool color combo um, as we go throughout the winter. Has a little bit of a darker profile because of the black. Um, um, Arctic foxtail in there. But that is a winter steelhead fly for Southern Oregon and Northern California. Thank you for tuning in.